Bill 31 was tabled in June 2023 and since has received much opposition from housing and tenants' rights advocates. Some advocates have even described the bill as the worst setback ever for tenants' rights in Quebec. Others have even called the bill an act of class warfare. So today I'm speaking with Cédric Dussault of the Coalition of Housing Committees and Tenant Associations of Quebec about the contents of the bill and why his organization and many others are against it. Uh, before we start, Cedric, how do you uh, would you would you agree with those uh, what advocates are saying about this bill that it's the worst setback in the last forty years? Yeah, of course. Um, as an organization, uh, the CLAC, we are forty five years old, and uh, throughout our history, we have never seen such a setback for uh, such a legal setback uh, for mm-hmm. tenants. So it probably is uh, in the history of Quebec the worst uh, setbacks uh, regarding tenants' rights. Incredibly concerning. Uh, in December, uh, in an interview with City TV, you mentioned that there's a lot of people that are worried about uh, not being able to find any affordable housing without the possibility of lease transfers. Now, Bill 31 is set to uh, alter the conditions of lease transfers in Quebec. Uh, could you speak a little on that? Well, what Bill 31 uh, will do, it will uh, make of no interest uh, the the the, the lease transfer for uh, tenants uh, because it will uh, allow uh, landlords to nullify um, the lease uh, once they receive uh, a notice of, uh, of lease transfer. Uh, so uh, for tenants, there, there will, won't be any interest to transfer uh, their lease. And uh, what I said about the possibility of people to, 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 uh, to have access to, uh, to housing uh, throughout lease transfer is that um, there are a lot of people who only access uh, to housing, especially affordable housing, but uh, for a lot of people, it's just access to housing, period. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it was true lease transfer. Uh, so there will be a lot of people, marginalized people, for example, marginalized groups uh, that will have no possibility to find uh, housing uh, after Bill 31 will, will pass. Mm. What, what is it exactly about lease transfers that uh, uh, allows this uh, affordable housing? Or what about lease transfers is, yeah. should we pr- be protecting? Well, the thing is, um, the problem fundamentally is not lease transfer. The problem is that we live in a context where uh, landlords have really high incentive to uh, evict tenants uh, to make sure that uh, tenants are leaving because uh, when there is a change of tenant, there is uh, basically no uh, form of rent control in Quebec. Um, when a tenant uh, is staying in their dwelling, they have the possibility to refuse uh, a rent uh, a rent hike that they they judge is being too high, is being abusive. Uh, but when there's a change of tenant, basically there's no control. So uh, in a context where there are really not a lot of uh, of, a part of housing available, uh, people tend to either uh, accept uh, rent rates that are really too high or uh, they are under the, the constant threat of being evicted. Uh, so when you are transferring your lease, this is a way that uh, you can get a new uh, apartment, uh, but having reasonable, uh, reasonable, a reasonable uh, rent. Um, but uh, finding an apartment, uh, just going on the market right now, it's it's pretty much impossible to for uh, to to find a affordable uh, rent. So um, this was probably the only. Uh, the only small will mean that uh, tenants had to find uh, affordable housing. So if you leave that out, um, it will be pretty much uh, impossible for, for, for tenants to find affordable housing. Um, and it will leave all the way for landlords to raise the rent uh, to the level they want. Uh, because when you have like, um, the possibility for tenants to transfer their lease, well, for the landlords, it, 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 it was uh, some kind of limit that they had, uh, and it was an annoyance for them. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why 
uh, this bill is uh, is being passed because uh, landlords have been uh, complaining about that a lot because uh, the the lease transfer were was preventing them uh, to to uh, to raise the rent to the level they want. Uh, so it's under the pressure of uh, landlords that this bill was uh, uh, was made. So. Uh, we are in a context in Quebec where rents have been exploding for 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 years, and uh, it's getting worse and worse uh, year after year. Um, and of course, uh, Bill Thirty One will just uh, amplify uh, that situation. So this bill is set to really exacerbate the uh, uh, the cost of rent in uh, Quebec, then. Yeah, yeah, of course, because um, as I said, it's the the, the problem is is fundamentally is not uh, the lease transfer. Uh, the problem is uh, the lack of uh, of rent control. Uh, mm. But uh, the lease transfer was like the it wasn't something that was uh, used that much. Um, we evaluate that it's probably like one to two percent of of lease of leases that were changing hands uh, between tenants that uh, were true lease transfer, so uh, it, it wasn't something that was uh, really uh, used by that much uh, tenants. But still, it was uh, probably the only thing uh, that were preventing landlords to to, to raise the rent. So it, it's it was what we can say a minor annoyance for landlords, but it speaks volume about how this government is considering the rights of uh, of tenants versus the privileges of landlords. So right. they, they, they are uh, not acting in any way to better protect the rights of tenants, and they are even enforcing the privileges of landlords. So. Right. It shows you where their interests are. Uh, this this dovetails well into my next question. Uh, so, Duranceau, the housing minister of uh, Quebec, uh, part of the uh, François Legault's uh, CAC cabinet, uh, she was interestingly framing this bill as something that is in support of tenants. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, clearly, I think, as you've described, uh, not quite the case. But uh, yeah. I think it's interesting that she tries to make that framing anyways. Um, her bill, uh, Duranceau's bill, Bill 31, uh, over the last, since June, it has gone through many iterations, I've heard. Uh, could you speak a little bit about these iterations, uh, what they've been like, what your organization thinks of them, and also what its current status is? Well, uh, first, uh, when the bill was presented, it was it had the form it had, and already there was, uh, there was uh, the, the lease transfer article that was unacceptable. And uh, what happens next is uh, there is uh, uh, the possibility for public, for, for organizations and for individuals to uh, to 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 produce a memoir on the on the bill, and uh, they they can be so some of them can be heard at the national assembly. Uh, as an organization, uh, of course, uh, we were heard at the national assembly saying. Um, all that we had against the bill, uh, why it was uh, su such a terrible bill. And, uh, but this, we had the possibility to come in just on the initial form of the bill. Uh, all the other iterations came after. So basically, uh, the bill that is being passed now is not exactly the same that was, uh, that was proposed before. So uh, it's kind of undemocratic to 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 function that way because uh, everyone who could uh, pronounce uh, against the bill and uh, made cre made criticism uh, and uh, and uh, asked for better uh, better reform uh, for the bill. Uh, basically, all that we said was not completely valid afterwards because there's a lot of things that we could not speak about because it wasn't in the initial form of the bill. So this is a big problem uh, at first. Uh, but the second problem is that uh, afterwards, there was uh, 
nothing that was uh, heard from the Minister of Housing that was said by all the people that were against the bill. Basically, um, the only uh, people that, that, that were uh, for this bill were uh, landlords associations. Um, mm. So uh, there was a, a lot of groups, a lot of organizations that uh, said that it would have terrible consequences, and, uh, but it wasn't heard at all. And uh, when the Minister of Housing is saying that uh, this is a bill that is also giving things to tenants, well, we were not heard. When we, 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 were, uh, we presented our memoir in, uh, in the Parliamentary Commission, this was the only time that as an organization we could speak to the minister. Uh, when she 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 wrote this bill, she didn't uh, she didn't consult any uh, organization representing tenants. So uh, to say that you are uh, proposing a bill that also gives things to tenants without consulting them, without consulting uh, the most important organizations that are uh, representing them and defending their rights is just plain uh, inexcusable. Um, so, uh, all, not only we were not consulted beforehand, but uh, when we, 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 we spoke about, uh, against the bill, uh, we were not heard afterwards. And all the changes that were made um, between uh, the, the initial form of the bill and uh, the form that we see now, um, all the changes uh, had basically no interest for, for tenants. It was either minor, um, minor changes or uh, things that were even worsening, uh, worsening the, this bill. So um, there, we could see that there was also a lot of, uh, of improvisation because uh, the Minister of Housing had a lot of time to, 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 uh, to, uh, to make modification to their bill to, uh, because it was proposed uh, at first in June, and then um, it was only studied in uh, this fall. So sh she had a lot of time, but uh, the, the study of the bill at the National Assembly started uh, with some delay because uh, she wasn't prepared. Um, she had to work again on the, uh, on the bill. And so uh, this is why probably this uh, bill wasn't adopted um, at, before, uh, before holiday season, uh, because uh, that's why we're speaking, still speaking about it now, is because uh, it, it should have been adopted before. Uh, it should have been ab adopted before holiday season, but it was such, uh, it, it was such an unprepared bill. It was, and, and still, during the commission, uh, during the, 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 the study of the bill, there still was thing that had to be changed. Like the opposition said that, that there's a problem with that article or uh, that other article, and they had to change th things on the fly. So it's, it's just uh, to have a bill uh, that is, uh, as we described it, probably the worst setback uh, in the history of Quebec for uh, tenants' rights, uh, to propose a bill that has such terrible consequences and without being uh, that much prepared is it, it, it just inexcusable for, for a woman. It seems sloppy. It's sloppy, yeah. It's, it, it was mm. sloppy. Um, of course, there are a lot of things that are um, intended to be the way they are, but... Uh, uh, on top of that, it is also sloppy. So uh, right. it's, it's really it, it's, insulting. It yeah. has, let's say, I think it sounds like you're saying it has these uh, ill intentions for tenants. And on top of yeah. that, it's also like at first incredibly sloppy. Exactly. Um, on, on this kind of issue of, uh, I guess, sloppy, if we're continuing to use the term, in, yeah. in June, Duranson was uh, found to be uh, in violation of the uh, Code of Ethics yeah. for uh, MNAs by uh, an ethics commissioner for... Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, fast tracking dealings with uh, her business partner, um, yeah. who I believe is in real estate. And I'm kind of yeah. curious from your perspective, do you think this ties into uh, what we're seeing right now with the bill? Like, how do you how do you connect the uh, the results of that ethics commission to uh, the contents of the bill? Yeah, of course. But just to say, uh, when uh, this was made public, uh, the Reclac asked for uh, for resignation, uh, immediate mm-hmm. resignation, which of course didn't happen. But uh, this is uh, unexcusable. But of course, it is time. Uh, when she was named, uh, just looking at her profile, we could see that this was a terrible nomination. Uh, she, she was herself into real estate. Uh, she she was not just a broker. She was also she also had uh, some companies uh, in real estate, uh, and she was partner with uh, yeah the, the the Andy Lemieux, uh, who is uh, the person that she was blamed for uh, for fast tracking uh, things. But uh, she, she it's important to understand that Andy Lemieux is a big name in real estate um, in uh, the Montreal area. Uh, and, and it, she was also a partner, a direct partner of, of uh, François Lens in uh, a few companies. Uh, she, she was on, on, on the, the board of companies that were uh, owned by François Lens mm. uh, So, of course, if you are looking at someone that is heavily, heavily involved into uh, real estate and not small real estate but big transactions uh, of course you can we can question how can such a person uh, make a balance between um, with, between the rights of tenants and the privileges of landlords uh, so it, it, it's really uh, someone that uh, was put there uh, also to to uh, Put forward uh, some interests, um, and we, we. It's not only that she was not a suitable person for for uh, for the minister of housing, uh, but uh, it, it's also that what she did afterwards, and especially with Bill Thirty One, confirmed that she was there to uh, put forward the interests of. Of landlords, but also uh, real estate moguls, but uh, everything for di- defending the, the, the private sector, basically. What can people do about this? What is your organization well, doing about this? We're asking for resignation, but uh, it goes beyond that because uh, the the fact that she was just named mm-hmm. uh, this government is uh, is also sending a message that on what side they are uh, because naming someone who is uh, so heavily uh, so heavily involved on one part because you describe that as a class warfare uh, basically this is yeah just the nomination of, of this person was was already uh, an act of war um, because it was taking sides uh, uh, for the private sector, for uh, the real estate investors. Um, so what can we do about that? We are asking for a resignation. Uh, I think um, if there is a, a sunny side to, uh, to what we're seeing right now is that uh, I think uh, this minister and also this government have been exposed uh, about uh, how they see um, the, the, how they see the, the, the housing sector um, and uh, they, because the context is so terrible that um, just inaction for, for years uh, from this government was already uh, unacceptable. They were already on the spot, I think, for their inaction, but now they're on the spot for the adverse action against mm. the housing crisis. Uh, so uh, I think if I uh, if I can see things a little bit positively, I think uh, it exposed what uh, this government was all about uh, when we were looking at the housing situation. Right, right. Of course, just her being named it was kind of clear the 
the, yeah. the direction they were kind of facing with what they wanted to and do. I, I, the I think there's pressure now. There's more pressure okay. on her, on on Francine Duranso, but also on the, on the CAC government. And we're seeing the polls. We're seeing the polls that uh, the CAC, it's not, of course, it's not only the, the housing situation. Uh, I won't comment on other uh, terrible uh, decisions that were made by this government, but uh, <laughs> but of course uh, the housing situation is uh, certainly something that is that has a lot of weight. Uh, let's not forget that housing is uh, is a primary need, and it's also something that is um, the 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 something that is the, affecting uh, people in their everyday life because uh, basically a lot of people are spending, the, the, the most important spending is uh, on housing uh, for, for most people in Quebec, not only tenants, but, uh, but, but most uh, people, uh, homeowners as well. Uh, so when we have a situation that is having uh, so heavy consequences for almost everyone in Quebec, um, to see that this government uh, not only does not take the situation of, of tenants uh, seriously, uh, but also is, uh, as I said, is uh, doing adverse actions against this situation. Well, I think this is, this is, uh, this is, one of the reasons why this uh, this government is is uh, having a downfall in the in the polls. I'm kind of speaking to the adverse effects towards tenants and how it's uh, uh, rent represents such a huge uh, fundamental part of people's uh, not rent necessarily, but housing represents such a huge for fundamental part of people's lives. Shelter, how rent uh, is eating a larger and larger portion of people's uh, uh, monthly uh, monthly wages. I'm kind of mm -hmm. curious. Have you received um, any kind of uh, commentary or or what or from tenants that you work with? Like, I'm kind of curious what uh, what the people who you're representing what they're saying about the bill. Well, of course, uh, the it wasn't that much uh, evident at first because, um, like, lease transfer, as I said, is not something that was so thoroughly used. So, uh, of course, for, for some people who were using it, and as I said, for some people who, for which it was the only way they could have access to housing, it was uh, already seen as a terrible thing. Uh, but um, just the, the thing that um, this was a setback for tenants, it was symbolic. It was not, it's just, not only just about lease transfer, is that in the context of the worst uh, housing crisis uh, that Quebec has experienced in its modern history, um, ha doing uh, something like Bill 31 uh, is, it, it, it was like uh, something that was really insulting for, uh, for, for, for tenants of Quebec, but, mm -hmm. but also other people. They, they, it's not only tenants, it's, uh, a lot of people are are um, experiencing the adverse effects of, of what is uh, uh, what is happening in in the housing sector because um, even uh, homeowners uh, see that um, that they they can barely afford uh, a house anymore. So uh, th this is like um, really it put like um, it put like a, a point on what all this government has made and not made uh, to, to, uh, to fight against the housing crisis. So it, it embodies, it's not only, as I said, Frasselin Zoranso has been speaking a lot about, uh, well, it, it's, it's, it's just least transfer, and there are some things that are uh, better for tenants in Bill 31, but uh, she, she, it's, it's complete denial. Um, it's, People are, are mad not just about lease transfer. They are mad because uh, not only uh, are you not doing anything to, uh, to better the situation of tenants, but you are putting forward a bill that is, uh, that is going to affect negatively uh, the, the life of tenants. Uh, one final question for you, Cedric. Yeah. 
with the bill potentially set to pass tomorrow or soon with the study wrapping up, what 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 is your organization preparing for? What is what is the what is the contingency plan if the bill were to pass? Well, we're we were already fighting against a lot of things. We or main um, what of course last year has been occupied a lot by fighting against Bill Thirty One. So mm -hmm. we, we kind of were in a more defensive position. Uh, the, the, uh, this made us uh, having to, to, to mobilize against that bill. But uh, even before that, even before Bill 31, the, 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 the housing crisis was uh, very severe um, and we were demanding actions uh, for it. Um, we've been, or, or, or main demand is about rent control. Uh, and um, it's, it's, uh, it's something that we are asking more and more, of course, uh, because uh, the rents have been exploding in recent years. But it's, rent control uh, is something that, as an organization, we've been demanding for 45 years. Since mm -hmm. the day uh, we were created, uh, this was all about uh, rent control. Um, so uh, various governments did not act on that, did not act on rent control. And the, the, the situation we're seeing now uh, is uh, consequences of, of, of inaction. And, uh, so we're gonna still go through that. Uh, what we've been asking now, it's not only rent control, but uh, on the short, um, on short term, it's uh, a rent freeze uh, because uh, yes, you have to implement rent control, but uh, this will probably take a little time. So uh, we have to stop. Uh, what is happening? We we have to stop the the rents exploding the way they are, um, and um, tenants are. We're at a point. Uh, we're if we're not at a point of no return, we're close to a point of no return, where uh, we will see uh, a lot of tenants um, being unable to afford uh, the rents, being impoverishing themselves uh, just by paying the rents. Uh, so we're in an emergency emergency situation right now. Uh, we were we were already in an emergency situation before Bill Thirty One. So of course, uh, if Bill Thirty One passes uh, or if it does not pass, we will still be asking for the same thing: is that uh, we need rent control, and especially uh, after Bill Thirty One has passed, and in that. It won't be possible to to, uh, to transfer your lease. Well, rent control is going to be um, even more important. Uh, so, and also we we also asking for protection against evictions uh, because those are two things that are uh, working uh, working on, on each other. Is that um, because uh, it is possible for landlords to raise the rent basically to the level they want when there's a change of tenants where they have an incentive to evict tenants. And because it's easy to evict tenants, because again, there's no control over, uh, there's no real control over evictions in Quebec. Uh, most of them are illegal. So um, because of that, it's easy to evict tenants. So it's easy to raise rent. And this will go on and on and on. Uh, until we really address the situation with rent control and with better protection against evasion. Thank you very much, Cedric. That was Cedric Dussault from RECLAC, the Coalition of Housing Committees and Tenant Associations of Quebec. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.